uh, we, we were talking about um, Red Hat and their, like, how much effort they put into improving the desktop. I think a lot of people, there's a lot of people that don't like System D, for example, and don't like Red Hat, but don't realize how much of the desktop actually is Red Hat. Yep. Even if not and directly Red Hat, like, heavily funded or started from Red Hat developers. Yeah. Um, and what I like a lot about Red Hat is that, like, the uh, employees, mm -hmm. just, they're just, like, Fedora, like, contributors that are, like, the fan base. They're very free software oriented. Yep. In case you didn't know, uh, they're very anti-CLA. Like, they're really, they're against CLAs. And they even have their own, like, anti-CLA movement uh, because they know the risk uh, of, like, they know how much of a risk it is, like, for open source projects to, like, with CLAs. Mm -hmm. And instead, they used, they adopted DCO, like, you know, the, I forget what it means, but whatever Linux uses. Developer um, Certificate of Origin. Yeah, something like that. Or probably that. And because, like, they actually do care about free software. And obviously, like, they do care about their own benefits as well, because, like, they need profit after all. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I really, really like about Red Hat is that they want their things to be community community driven. SMD, it's very like actually not not SMD Fedora. Mm -hmm. Um, it's very um, it's uh, it's a comp um. Well, I was gonna say company. Uh, it's actually like politically independent from Red Hat. Mm -hmm. If if like Fedora, like if the uh contributors if they wanted like you could choose something that would go against Red Hat. Like for example, um. Like Red Hat uh, XFS is developed by Red Hat, but um, Fedora they use ButterFS and not XFS. Like that's one of the things. And well, uh, if uh, the community wants, they could choose something that is not even developed by Red Hat at all. And whatever it is, like um, like what I'm trying to say is like it's not Red Hat that decides what they do with Fedora, mm -hmm. but. A lot of the things they do, it's mostly like infrastructure, like you know, wiki. That's where Red Hat comes in, yep, like yep. bug tracker and things like that. It's uh, it's the same thing with Flatpak. Mm -hmm. Like Flatpak was started by a Red Hat developer, but it's very much community driven as mm -hmm. well because it's not just Red Hat that is involved. There's GNOME that is involved, KDE, um, Labra, um, Purism, Endless many like organizations or foundations that are mm -hmm. really involved in flatback development same thing with system d um it's not just by red hat well now now it's microsoft as well um <laughs> but yeah like it was well now it's microsoft red hat there's if i remember right there was also intel involved mm -hmm. in system d and there's also a couple of Debian members of Debian who were involved in System D and actually members of the System D project, mm -hmm. because like, like it's not just Red Hat that um uh, that controls. Well, actually, they don't really control it. it. They just employ someone to work on it. Sure. There are also like other members who uh who, like uh, to vote or whatever it is. Even with GNOME, like GNOME isn't really. It had project at all, but people say it's, it's comp company driven. I completely disagree with that. I think it's very um, community driven. It's it's just like it kind of they do lack individual developers a bit. But mm. if I want, like, see, like um, Red Hat could employ me to work on GNOME, and a couple of months later. I can apply to be a GNOME Foundation member and they will accept me because, well, I contributed to GNOME and, you know, I've showed that, look, I put work on GNOME. Right. If I was an individual developer, like, unaffiliated with, like, any company and I would contribute to GNOME and I would apply for a membership, well, they would still accept me for that. Mm -hmm. um, and after that, I can vote, I can I can start maintaining software and things like that. Um, the only issue is like, you know, if you see that GNOME is too corporate, well, you might as well try to like start a bit contributing to GNOME, 
when you become a member, like you can have your say, you know, you can voice your opinion and say like, oh, we should probably focus a bit more on the community side and things like that. Um, I think yeah. the, the two corporate things kind of amusing. Like there's, there, there's a lot of Red Hat employees that work on this. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, well, the reason why there's a lot of Red Hat employees that work on, on, a, on a project like that is because Red Hat hires a lot of people and they hire a lot of good developers. So like, yeah. and they hire people to work on, on projects. Like, it's not like they're just making this money and then going and buying mega yachts. Like, they're putting money into the projects you want to see improve. I think, I think a lot of people romanticize this idea of completely free of corporate money, completely com community driven. Nobody is like getting any money to do any of this work. It's just doing it for the joy of the code and doing it because free software is the morally good thing. But people have to pay their rent. And if yeah. a company like Red Hat has a has a model to make money in the like make money from corporate customers and bring money into this space, I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing. It can be a bad thing in certain cases where a lot of where developers say like a single entity gets a lot of control and then pushes other people out. But that doesn't seem to be the way that Red Hat and Red Hat employees are managing any of these projects. Yeah, and also a lot of the projects they work on, it's uh, like that as well. Like, um, like Gnome, as I said, like um, there's a couple of companies and organizations that, would, that contribute to Gnome, like um, Purism, Mm -hmm. maintains Libadweta. Uh, GTK is maintained by the GNOME Foundation. Um, and then there are some applications like um, GNOME Boxes that mm -hmm. is maintained by Red Hat. And if I believe, if I remember right, WebKit GTK, like the the engine, is maintained by a company called Egalia, if I remember right. I might be wrong. But we can see like our companies work on different aspects. And it's not like one company can just abuse it because if they do abuse it, they're going to like affect other companies as well, like that work on a GNOME and plus like the other members who are like independent. And there's gonna have a lot of issues. So even then, like Red Hat can't like or any company can't really um abuse mm -hmm. inside GNOME.